hi folks this is Saryum for CVNR uh, today we are going to as promised we are going to look into uh, uh, OANI right um, as I told you OANI is um, uh, the common condition which uh, any therapist sees in his clinic right so we are going to today, today do OANI and uh, most of it is uh, based on uh, evidence. A lot of people think that you can't do evidence-based medicine because it is difficult, it, is, it takes long time, uh, or um, the information is not adequate and things like that. So, uh, so I just had a go at it so that we can make a clinical decision make, uh, based on uh, OIN. Now the first, uh, the first thing you want to uh, remember uh, when you are um, talking about OIN is uh, OANE is not a disease of the cartilage as we used to think. Now we think that it's a disease of the whole of the joint. It affects uh, all parts of the uh, joint, including the meniscus, ligaments, uh, and the cartilage, and things like that. Right? And uh, so there is no uh, one particular structure which we want to recreate or things like that. And in this, uh, in this video, what I have done is I have uh, also used color coding uh, to say that what are the treatment which are useful or you should do it, what are the treatment you should not do, and what are the treatments which you may do, right? Uh, red is for not to do, green is for do it, and amber or orange for maybe you can do it depending on the uh, assessment and things like that, the, the, the information which you get from the patient and the uh, patients, uh, what they want and things like that. So <clears throat> most of uh, the information which I am going to talk today is from Cochrane. If you will just uh, give a Cochrane review or if you just uh, enter Wayne into it, you will get around 32 uh, reviews. So most of it is information from that. Also, I've taken information from other sites also, but most of it is from uh, Cochrane, right? <clears throat> and there are uh, three treatments I, I think uh, is available for OANE. Uh, one is surgery for treatment of OANE, then surgery for uh, the last part of the OANE, that is when you have, uh, uh, when there is no alternative, so you go for replacement surgeries. And then you have pharmacological treatment, uh, drugs, injections, and things like that. And the last part is uh, physiotherapy, that is uh, non-pharmacological uh, treatment, right? So that's how I have also ordered this uh, video also. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is surgeries which are used for uh, treatment of uh, OEM, right? A uh, lot of surgeries have been suggested uh, assuming that if you clean the uh, clean the surface of the joint, it will go away, uh, that is, it will become better, um, assuming that the cartilage is the biggest problem and then uh, things like that. So, so they have tried uh, all sorts of orthoscopic surgery and uh, blah, 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 blah. But the problem is whether it's osteotomy or lavage or debridement, uh, all these surgeries have been proven to be uh, ridiculously uh, useless. So most of the orthopedic surgery and surgeons and also uh, reviews and uh, systematic reviews and all evidence point to not doing these things, all right? Now, the next part is we know that there are a lot of people who are getting uh, knee replacement, right? The problem with OA knee is that it is, uh, it's a condition where the symptoms go up and down like this. Right? It is not up like this or down like this or up and then it goes up for the, like that for quite a certain time and then it, it's mostly that it sort of goes up and down what we call as waxing and waning. Right? So it is difficult to find out who is getting better and who is not getting better with uh, just your clinical observation because if you are if you are giving a treatment and if they are going up, is it naturally is it going up or your treatment is not working? You can't say. Likewise, when it is coming down, is it coming down because naturally or because of your treatment? It is difficult to understand, right? That is why trials are important because these kind of uh, regression towards mean can be uh, overcome with trials, right? In clinical uh, clinical um, settings, it is difficult to find out 
why I'm talking about is this is because when you are talking about replacement, you are talking about getting a patient a new knee. When will you get a new knee or a new joint, right? So for that, the first and foremost is they need to be uh, with a lot of pain for three to six months. And one of the important things in understanding three to six months pain is you need to have repeated measures. You can't have one measure uh, and then say that, okay, you will need a, a replacement. What I mean by that is if my patient comes with so much of pain and stiffness today, remember the, the automatically the pain goes down, right? Natural regression. Uh, so you can't measure it in one day and say that, okay, he's in the highest version, so I will do the surgery. Because in another one month, they may go down also. So you want to do a repeated measure, again, for two to uh, three to six months and find out that, okay, they are not going down, there is no change in the pain, their physical uh, disability is large, and no physiotherapy is uh, useful, the radiological findings are very, very severe, maybe you can go for uh, uh, replacement, right? Uh, that's why I put it in um, orange to say that maybe because these uh, these um, these criteria are not exactly uh, based on evidence. There is some evidence, and also there is uh, some amount of just saying that. And when it comes to pharmacological evidence, uh, the first thing we are going to look into is intraarticular steroid injections. It's a no-no and it's been proven to be useless, whether it's intra-articular uh, catechosteroid or uh, viscous supplements, whatever it is, it doesn't help. Uh, opioids is a big no-no. Um, you might have all heard of the crisis which is uh, brewing in the US now. No opioid seems to be uh, useful, uh, including uh, tremadol and things like that. And they have found out that uh, it is not as valuable as um, it is not as valuable as NSADs. NSAD seems to be a better choice, right? Uh, all the all the all the studies indicate that NSADs, which are brufen, uh, which is commonly given in our country, uh, all the all these types of drugs, uh, given some drugs here also, uh, they seem to be working very well. Um, there is a drug called as uh, Naxo uh, Naproxen, that is what. Uh, some evidence seems to be suggesting that, and the NICE, NICE is suggesting some other NSAD, but they are not very clear which, which NSAD works better. So we don't know, but NSAD seems to be helpful, right? But remember, it cannot be a, a standalone treatment. It should be added with uh, some amount of uh, some uh, non-pharmacological treatment. And the, one of the most important non-pharmacological treatment is excise. And I'm going to start with excise in water because um, excise in water uh, seems to be helpful and also it is uh, also it produces a significant uh, reduction in their pain and, uh, and their, and their uh, functioning and things like that. Only problem is uh, with me uh, in case of uh, water and things like that is uh, there is no water in our country. So <clears throat> uh, it seems to be uh, like what uh, Vadivel who used to say, this is a reference only for people who understand Tamil. Uh, he can't find the well, right? So <laughs> I'm not sure whether um, excise in water is a good idea, especially in country like us. And, as, and that too in Chennai and things like that. Right. So the most important thing is excise uh, in land. That is what is working very well for uh, people with uh, OANE. They are they decrease your pain uh, significantly for three to six months. Uh, I mean, six to twelve months after you have stopped, even stopped exercising. But they increase your physical ability, activity, and things like that. They also improve your uh, quality of life, right? You can sleep better, you can do things better, uh, your social, part social participation is slightly better, things like that are very good with 
uh, XX. That is the good news about Boeing. A lot of people think that you need this treatment, that treatment, that advance. No, XX works. It works better. And uh, astonishingly, one of the few high quality evidence uh, in physiotherapy is for uh, XX in OAME. And we also know that you don't have to do more research in uh, XX because we know how much it will work. It's a small improvement, but it works. That we know very, very well. Right? So that's what uh, the review is also uh, saying that uh, it works very well and you need to do it. Now, one of the important things um, uh, in this is most of them are high quality to moderate quality. That's all right for us. Now, one of the important things for us uh, for uh, in physiotherapy is that a lot of people like <clears throat> think that uh, we tend to think that we have to do exercise. Uh, uh, we know that we have to do exercise, but most of the time we think that we have to. If we do exercise, the joint will. Uh, if I do a weight-bearing exercise like this, the joint will become more degenerated and things like that. So I will be doing isometrics, right? So, so the question I'm trying to ask you here is, what type of exercise you want to do? Isometric or uh, isotonic, right? Now, we know that what type of exercise exactly is not very clear from the evidence. Any exercise is good exercise, that's the point. But remember, your patient is walking and coming to you, right? He is not in a wheelchair or anything, so he's walking. So his joint is already putting weight on that. So if you do exercise, nothing will happen to him. That is what type of exercise I'm talking about? Isotonic or weight-bearing exercise. And if you look into all the trials which they have taken for um, the, 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 the systematic review, you will see that most of the exercise, what they have done is cycling, walking, squatting, um, uh, quad sub stable, quad sub exercise with uh, teraband, these kind of exercise, which is given to your whole of your lower extremity, not just uh, necessarily your uh, knee joint, but your whole of your uh, whole of your uh, lower limb, right? So that kind of exercise is very good. Cycling, walking are all very good, right? Only issue we don't know is how long the duration should be and the intensity of the exercise and things like that. We are not still clear, but any exercise is good exercise. That is the good news, right? So remember to do the exercise for your patient and that to isotonic or weight-bearing exercise. And the uh, next thing you want to remember is uh, pain is multifactorial. It is contextual. Brain works uh, according to the uh, context, not just uh, sensory input, and then it gives a response, right? So uh, we want to make them, enable them. That's what your ICF is saying, right? So make them understand the value of exercise. Make them understand the value of being self-reliant by themselves, taking care of themselves, being active, being motivated to do an exercise, motivated to probably reduce some weight, right? All these things have to be taught to them. And also one important thing they, they think that you should not teach your uh, patients is that your joint has gone like this, that is, the, uh, the alignment is gone, all sorts of nonsensical biomechanics. Leave that alone. It is not biomechanics alone which uh, which interferes or which is acting on your human body. There are physiology, there is biochemistry, a lot of things are happening, not just your, uh, your biomechanics. So don't tell them that the alignment is wrong, don't sit on the floor, don't, uh, don't ride the elephant, don't go on the camel, all sorts of nonsensical things should be stopped, right? The joint is there to be bent. That is why it is called a joint, right? So if somebody is telling them not to sit on the floor, uh, just kick them in the shin and tell them that you are an idiot, right? So don't tell your alignment and all sorts of negative things. Tell them about positive things. What they mean by positive is reduce their anxiety. What can be done? Okay, nothing has happened to your joint. All these wear and tear uh, words are not useful. 
don't show them the XA and see what happened to your joint, things like that. Those are not helpful. They think that that should be avoided, right? And you need to help your patient to do self-management. And passive and non-pharmacological, other non-pharmacological treatment like electrotherapy, um, your manual therapy may or may not work. And we know that they have very small effect and things like that. So uh, you may or may not give. I'm not going to tell you not to give, but that's up to you. Right? So <clears throat> what's the um, final word? Um, make them do a lot of exercise, make them self-reliant. If needed, maybe they can be given uh, some drugs to reduce their pain and maybe sleep, make them sleep better and things like that. Right? And stop telling them not to sit on the floor, uh, not to ride on the elephant and things like that. And if you do all these things and if they do good exercise program, they are going to live happy. Right? Thank you so much. And if you like our video, subscribe to our channel. And for more videos, uh, please wait. Thank you.